The microphone I'm talking about today has just taken the world by storm. I bet that a lot of people have seen this microphone or a microphone that is identical to it. There are even very popular YouTubers out there that have used this microphone in their videos. But this product has gone so far beyond being just a microphone. It's a fashion statement. That might sound like an exaggeration. However, you can go over to Etsy right now to the Red Vixen account and you'll find that they are bedazzling these microphones. I don't know much, but I do know that rhinestones equal fashion statement. <laughs> the microphone that I'm talking about could be considered the mini microphone. The exact one I'm testing out today, even though a majority of them are identical, is the Uniwit or Uniwit K2. So I'm just going to be doing a short little video review of this. And yes, this is considered a stash or smash episode, episode number two. But if this is your first time here, stash or smash videos basically just mean if I like it, I'll recommend that you buy it. But if I don't like it, I will smash it. I'll destroy it. But the Uniwit came in around $10 when I purchased it. It seems like a lot of companies just buy this and slap their brand name on it and resell it. So I don't think there's going to be much of a quality difference between all of them. I think it can also be called like the mini karaoke microphone. With arms wide open. But I'll give you all the information that you need about this mini microphone. We'll run through some simple tests with it. But first, let's talk about what comes with it if you decide to purchase the K2 mini microphone. Inside the box, you will find a microphone that does have a permanently attached cable. At the end of that cable is a TRRS, 3.5 millimeter connector. This cable does actually split into a female 3.5 TRS connection. That's where you can plug your headphones in. Additionally, this does come with a little mic clip that just goes on the desk stand for this. The desk stand is essentially just like a little platform. But to talk about the build quality real quick, I'm actually will give credit where credit is due. The microphone itself feels really solid. I was actually surprised by that. The little desk stand feels terrible and it actually just broke. So cool. The permanent cable in the microphone has like quite a bit of give if you like push back and forth on it. I feel like this cable will give out very quickly. However, that's the thing with microphones like this is they're more of like a novelty thing. So if it breaks fast, people aren't really upset about it. But this is essentially half the cost of the Behringer XM8500 that comes in around $20 to $25. And that mic is built very well and is actually a very usable XLR mic. So I understand that this is just so funny and so cute and hilarious. But for not much more money, you could actually get a good mic. Now let's get serious about this <laughs> and do some audio tests. The little mic clip and desk stand thing uh, don't have like a three eighths inch threading or even a quarter to any threading on it. So you're not putting this on a microphone stand very easily unless you tape it or make it work like I'm doing right now. Right now I'm two feet away from the mini microphone and now I'm about a foot away from the mini microphone, now about six inches away. And now I'm going to get right up on top of the mini K2 microphone from Uniwit, Uniwit, whatever. With this microphone by my face, it does make me look like I am gigantic. If you decide to use this little desk stand, this is with it about 18 inches from my mouth on my desk right now, and here's the audio quality you can expect from that. Now we're gonna do some plosives. Peter Parker, Peter Pan, Picasso, Planters Pickled Peanutses. Now if I spin the microphone around, we'll check out the polar pattern. I'm slowly turning it, it's at 90 degrees. Now it's at 180 degrees and I'm slowly turning it around to the other side, 90 degrees, and now back to the front of the microphone. Now obviously a very big question about this microphone is how is the handling noise? Now if you're going to pass this back and forth between your little pinchers, here's how that's going to sound. Let's go whole hand. Oh wow, that really changed the tone of the microphone. Whole hand handling noise. Now back to the fingies, back to the fingies. There you go. Now when I first saw this microphone, I thought, there's one test this microphone might be great at, a kitty purr test. It wasn't great by his mouth. Too much air got pushed into it. But if you stick it down right by their chest, it's perfect. Perfect. Still wish it had a little bit more low end though. It's kind of weak from a low-end standpoint. Right now I'm in a completely untreated room with the mini microphone plugged directly into my Sony ZV-E1. 
I only have the gain set to one right now, and actually I would have preferred it to be a little bit lower than that. I'm hitting right around negative 12 decibels, but sometimes negative 11, negative 10. But if you are going to plug this directly into your camera, you gotta keep in mind that this is a TRRS connection. So you will need an adapter to make this a TRS connection. The one that I'm using is from Rode. I will link it down in the description. But I wanted to do a quick untreated room test, and also I just wanted to test the low light capabilities on the ZV-E1. I literally only have one lamp on and it's like pretty dim right now. Everything else is turned off in this house aside from the little lamp behind me. Mood lighting, obviously. But here's what you can expect from the mini microphone in an untreated room going directly into a camera. Now just to get real weird with this review, let's record a guitar. Why not? Now let's go ahead and put the mini microphone up against the iPhone audio. Now I have the K2 mini microphone plugged directly into the iPhone 15 Pro. So here's the sound quality of that. Now just a quick note, if you are going to use the headphone jack on the mini microphone, it does not have like latency free monitoring or anything like that. It just very simply allows audio to play through. You can't monitor your audio. So you'd actually have to record something and then go and play it back. And that's when you'd be able to hear it. But now let's go ahead and test this versus the built-in iPhone audio. Now here is the sound of the built-in iPhone audio. And to be fair, I am about two feet away from the iPhone's mic. And maybe that is one reason that people think the mini mic sounds better than their built-in iPhone is just the distance away from the camera when they're filming. But there are alternatives. There are cheap microphones out there that you can plug into your phone and get pretty decent audio quality. But now let me go back to using the mini microphone just so you can hear a comparison. Now one more time, here is the mini microphone. I do have the microphone angled as you can see, so my plosives are going past it rather than into it. And one last time, this is without the mini microphone plugged in. This is the iPhone audio. Now I currently have the mini microphone plugged into the iPhone 15 Pro, and now I'm going to do a quick back and forth comparison with a few different options. However, before we go back to back with them, I want to introduce the options real quick. Now I have the Ceramonic Smart Mic 5S plugged into the iPhone 15 Pro. You can kind of see it down in the corner of the frame right there. This isn't a microphone that's meant to be held or anything. It's kind of more of like a shotgun style microphone, but this microphone usually goes for like 25 to $29. However, a little while back, I bought it on Amazon for $786. So it was quite cheap. In fact, even cheaper than what I paid for the mini microphone. Now I'm using a setup that is a little bit different from the other ones. This is the Behringer XM8500. This is an XLR dynamic microphone and currently it's going into the TC Helicon Go Vocal. Usually you can get both of these devices for around $25. So this whole setup that does go directly into the phone can be about 50 bucks. If you are looking to get the Go Vocal, check the price on the Go Solo. It is a better option. But right now we have the $25 XM8500 500 going into the $25 Go Vocal. Here's how that sounds. Now we are getting a little bit more expensive, if you could call it expensive, which you shouldn't. Right now I'm talking into the Five Fine K669D, and that's going directly into Five Fine's audio interface. I believe it's called the SC1, but it is going directly into my iPhone 15 Pro with a USB-C cable. And the interface itself is $55, the microphone itself is $35, but you're getting a microphone and an interface. Things that you can use for a long time. If you want to upgrade your microphone, you can still use the interface. If you want to upgrade the interface, you can still use your microphone. You can actually grow with these products. We're back on the mini microphone, and now I'm just going to go back to back with the different sound options so you can hear them close together. Once again, we have the XM8500 going into the Go Vocal from TC Helicon. Here's how that sounds. Now we are back on the Ceramonic microphone, the Smart Mic 5S. Here is the Five Fine K669D that goes for 35 bucks. And once again, here is the Behringer microphone, the XLR Dynamic Mic. Now I'm going to jump into my review of the mini microphone and decide if I'm going to smash it. Now with this microphone, it really doesn't come down to sound. It comes down to whether or not you want to be goofy and get a tiny little microphone. I really hope there is not a person out there that bought this mic being like, that's so sick, like coolest mic ever. 
I really hope that's not a real thing. You never know these days. People are weird. But this is just meant to be a goofy little microphone. I have seen so many YouTubers use this in like an interview situation and they're just passing it back and forth thinking it's so funny and not played out at all. I'm sure there are some people out there that plug this into their phone and they were like, oh, this sounds better. But the main reason for that is if you're filming yourself, that microphone on that phone is further away. You get this one a little bit closer to your mouth, it's going to sound better. So from that standpoint, it does make sense. However, there are pretty decent budget microphones out there now, and you can even get some pretty inexpensive lavalier microphones. Do not hold the lavalier microphones, though. I'm not like a grouchy McGroucherson or anything, but that is not how you use lavalier microphones. Just clip that shit or just get like a handheld microphone. But if you are looking for an inexpensive microphone, I will link some down in the description if you wanna go check those out. Now for me, I just think this microphone is goofy, it's silly. I mean, look at it, you can't take it seriously. And quite frankly, I never once went into this review thinking I wasn't going to smash this microphone. Not because I expected to hate it, but mostly because I see it as a challenge. This thing is tiny and very compact, and I'm really curious what I'm gonna have to do to break this thing. Bottom line, if you want this microphone, it's goofy and it's fun and you think it's silly when you talk into it, I, I, it just makes you so happy, I'm not gonna ruin your fun. Get the goofy mic. It's not a good sounding microphone. There are better options out there. This isn't for anyone that wants like professional quality. And not to mention, if you wanna come off professional, maybe don't hold a tiny fucking microphone in your hand. I don't know. Do I recommend that people buy this microphone? No, because honestly, it's just a waste of money. Is it a funny little thing? Yes, but no one really needs it. So let's go ahead and try to smash this. Now, just a quick disclaimer, what you're about to see could get a little gruesome, a little messed up, and quite ugly. All right, Billy, do your worst. You're being lazy. Okay, there we go. There's my boxing champion. There she is. Okay, really? Really, this is like the most entertaining thing. I never let you on my desk. Get after it, girl. There you go, Billy. Okay, let's twirl it. Let's get weird with it. Twirl, do you like this? This might be pointless. I will go get your sister if you don't start doing a better job here. I need vicious, I need vicious. Oh no. Oh, I know you can't resist that. You are resisting it, no problem, okay. I'm going to get your sister. You failed this. You failed. You're going to feel real dumb when your sister beats the shit out of this microphone. Penny, get over here. We're catfishing. Get it? <laughs> Be involved in the microphone. You are being worse than Billy was. What is happening? Get it, Penny. Get it. Good girl. There we go. There we go. Oh, yeah, Billy, just scratch that itch. Yeah, get after it. Whatever. <sighs> Well, I gave catfishing my best try. I guess it's a good thing I'm not good at catfishing, so maybe this is a win overall. But let me get to the thing that I am really good at, hitting microphones with tools like hammers and stuff. Let's do that. I'm really curious how much this is gonna take. Oh, not much, okay. Okay, very briefly, I just want to mention that I probably would give the build quality of the mini microphone a 10. It is so solid and like really hard that when I was hitting it with a hammer, it literally broke the board that I was hitting it on. I mean, this isn't like the strongest thing in the world, but damn. Also, there are like perfect little grill imprints on the wood. So build quality wise, this thing is ridiculous. But to be clear, I don't recommend this microphone from a sound standpoint. But thank you all for watching this video. I hope that you had fun and I do want to just say thank you to all of the subscribers and all of the members of the audio hotline. I'll see all you audio nerds next time.